Ladies and gentlemen, a question that I often get from students is this. Uh, they say, hey, both the median and the mean, they're both um, measures of central tendency. Can you please explain to me when I should use this one and when I should use this one? This is going to be explained in this video. As a context, we're going to use Street Fighter 2. This was a popular arcade game in the 1990s. Now, the way arcade games worked is um, you insert coins and then um, you're allowed to play until you are beaten. Now, suppose that we have an arcade business and this business looks at a number of players and how much money they spent. And uh, this is uh, visible in this table. This player inserted $4 in this machine, in this game. This player inserted $10 and this player $5,000. Now, if you want to calculate the mean or average, this is what we should do. Add these values up, which is what we did here, divide them by the number of observations. We have nine players, we have data about nine players, so we have nine observations, so we divide everything by nine. Which means that on average, uh, the player spent $561. The mean is 561. Now let's calculate the median. In order to do that, we have to order the data from low to high. And then the middle value would be the median. Well, in this case, the middle value would be 7. Okay, so that would be the median. Now let's compare the median and the mean. Both of them measures of central tendency. There's a big difference between them. What is causing that big difference? The big difference is caused by the fact that the mean, the mean is much more sensitive to extreme values than the median. Much more sensitive. And um, it is much more influenced by this 5,000. You see that? Than the median. The median is not influenced by this 5,000. So coming back to the first question that we started with. Which one is better? When should I use the mean? When should I use the median? It's difficult to say which one is better. Use them together. That is the power. Use them together. And if you see a big difference between them, if you see that the mean and the median are very, very much apart, investigate what is causing that. In this case, if I were to investigate, I would quickly see that, hey, what is causing that is this 5,000. Then you have to take another important decision. Once you found out that the 5,000 is indeed causing this, and it need it is an extreme value, you have to decide, do I eliminate the 5,000 or not? Do not eliminate it if it is just part of your data. If we have here a group of nine people, eh? if every group of nine people or many groups of nine people contain one person such as this person, a person who is heavily addicted, who cannot control himself or herself and spends incredible amounts of money, then this is just part of the data and it should not be eliminated. However, if this is a very, very rare occurrence, this person is maybe the, the only addict in the, in the city or the only addict uh, in the province or one of the very, 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 very few that maybe occur once in a million, then eliminate that. Because now this person puts a, a, a heavy weight on your data set, which should not be put there. Okay, so this is the conclusion. Use the median and the mean together and then decide if there are extreme values if you wish to eliminate them.